Board Game Hero here, and today we are going to do a solo playthrough of Creep by Andrew Nerger and Jeffrey Chin. Okay, uh, by the way, we are going to do a new setup. We're going to do this, everything, all of this in a new setup. We will have this camera here for uh, maybe dice roll that you can see at the lower right. And then this one as an overhead view. So I'll show you very quickly. This is the overhead view. And this is going to be the, maybe for the dice roll or something like that. A little bit of a close up. And here is myself. So this is the first time I'm doing this, so please bear with me. <laughs> All right. So this is Crypt. Crypt is a set collection bidding game where you have dice as your servants. You can see here, these are the dice that they have. So you have dice as your servants, and you will have items on the board. You have items on the board. Uh, and then we have some collectors here that will modify the, the scoring. Okay, so this this uh the items here these are the uh you're trying to collect them and they will give you points in the at the end of the game and these collectors will modify will add points to that and give you some abilities as well and uh, in the solo game we are playing against a ghost uh and we are uh you know trying to claim cards and he as uh, she or they are trying to discard. The card. So the backstory of this is that the king has died, and we are, or, or I, because as an only child, this is a solo game, so this is an only child. So I am uh, a son of of the king. So I'm trying to, you know, his treasures are buried with him, and he did not even give me anything uh, after he died, right? When he died. So what I'm trying to do is I'm go I'm I'm robbing his, uh, I'm robbing his grave of the treasures or the items or the belongings that I claim to be mine. So that's that's the backstory of it. Now he, as a ghost, he's just trying to claim what is rightfully his, right? So he wants to bring it uh, with him uh, in his grave. So that's that's what we are fighting for. Now these collectors on the board are, are set up. This, they're just going to buy the, the items from you at the end of the game. All right. So I just want to mention that the box of this, the presentation is by far one of the best that I have seen. Maybe I, I can show you a little a bit quickly. Uh, yeah, all right. So as you will notice here, right, this is a crib. I will show you. So this is a crib, right? And when you open the crib, the king will be there. The body of the king will be there with all his belongings, the gold. And then if you take all of the gold in there, you will have nothing left but the remains of the king. And it's really, really, really nice. Thematic and uh, genius. Great way to present your game. Anyway, uh, moving on. Maybe we can start our first round. Okay, for all, for our first round, maybe you don't need to see me yet. Let me see. Never mind. Right. So for our first round, um, so this indicates that you are, that you are first, and also you are the last in solo or two player game. Uh. Okay. So the items. Let's open three. One of them will be face down. So these are the three items. And then we have one pottery face down here. We have jewelry, tapestry, and the pottery. You know, I'm gonna keep looking at the screen here because I, I wanna see what I am. You know, like like this. You cannot see the bottom card. So I'm gonna adjust, put it all up, push it all up, and the draw deck. There we go. There, you can see everything now. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pull it. Never mind. So I have three servants. What do we want to get? Uh, I'm, I'm, I want to get this pottery because the more pottery you have, this collector, the pottery collector, the side A, by the way, the side B is more uh, advanced. 
So we are doing the side A. Uh, for the side A, let me show you one by one each collectors. So this is a pottery collector. Uh, the more pottery cards you have, the more coins you will get at the end of the game. So if you have four, you get eight. If you have two only, you get two coins, right? Then next we have the manuscript collector. This will activate once you have two manuscript. And once you have two manuscript cards, each of your manuscript is now worth four instead of whatever they're worth. So if there's one, it's going to be four now. So that's also good. Then next we have the <clears throat> we have the jewelry. Uh, for the jewelry, this will uh, score your highest valued um, jewelry twice. So if you have a jewelry worth four, that's your highest. It's going to be eight. And then this one, once you have one tapestry, this will activate. And if you have the most value tapestry, you get five at the end of the game. But this is a, a, a little bit confusing on solo game because if you just get one tapestry, that's automatically uh, a free five coins because the computer or the AI will not get uh, the tapestry. But uh, we will check that later. Now, let's go to the idol collector. This idol collector just allows you to flip uh, an idol item. And then you may re-roll a die. Because you will roll your die once you use the servant if so to determine if it will be exhausted or will be retained. Now, for the remains collector, it just allows you to recover one die if you flip two remain items. Recover one die. Once your die is exhausted, you have to spend an action to recover all of your die. Now, if you have the remains collector, you can recover one of your die just by flipping two of the item cards uh let me check the rule book very quickly now to see if the items of the computer will go to his supply or just discarded oh are discarded any cards that you do not collect are discarded so yeah so basically the rule here is once you get a tapestry card you will get extra five points. That's how that's how I interpret this uh, tapestry collector card that you can see here. Yeah, I think we can both agree about that, right? All right, so maybe we can do our first round now. So let's focus on. I want to focus on this tapestry because once I got this, once I have this, that's that will give me extra five points already. So I'm gonna get that. Just put one in there. You know, I mean. Nothing to lose with one. One is the safest because you don't have to roll for exhaustion. That's automatically gonna go back to you. Um, then I want this. I want to get as much pottery in the beginning as possible. Maybe I can pass this later. Uh, so I'm going to bid here a six, double three. For this pottery, or do maybe I don't want that. Because, yeah, mm, let me think. Huh? Maybe I'm overthinking this early in the game. It's okay because if we get pushed out, we are the last player, so we can, you know, bid again for that. Uh, so let's go. So this is the player's or the AI's turn. The, to do the AI's turn, you have to roll uh, his die. His dice. And you take the highest, the highest value dice, and you, you bid that on the highest value card. So let's look at this. We have four. And we're going to, oh, sorry, here. We have four, and we're going to put it here on the four. And then his three will be, okay. Also, the face down card here is always worth 2.5. It's assumed to be 2.5. So this is the second highest, but he cannot outbid me here. So he's going to be this three on the tapestry. And he's going to push out one of my die, my servants there. And his uh, one car, one die that wasn't used will be discarded. Okay, so it's my turn again because I have the, the lights out card. That means you are the first player or the leader and you, all, you are also the last player. So we have our one die here, and I want to push him off 
not on the top S3 anymore. He can keep that. I'm going to put it on this one. So that, yeah, because that's, I think, five, 4 is the highest value of a card. So, but that's too risky, you know. So let's let's go to the collection phase. So let's just, you know, let's, let's resolve the computer first. Or the, the AI first. Or what do we call him? The ghost first. So he gets this. He claimed that this will be discarded. Goodbye. And then now on to our collection. So we will collect this crown. This is now ours. And then let's put it here. Where, 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 where's the good place to put this? You can see. You know what? I'm trying to sort out the view. So the cards go here. Then my card. That okay. So this is where my cards will be. Now this is five. I'm hoping to get five or six. If I get lower than the effort or the number of the die that I was that it was used for, then it's gonna be exhausted. So six, that's lucky. Uh, it's not, it's not gonna be exhausted because I got six, right? It turns here, and then these two trees. Uh, what did we get first? Oh, we got a, a pottery worth three coin. Now let's roll this for exhaustion. I should roll three or higher. Okay, both of them came back to me, uh, unexhausted, right? Okay, now on to the second round. The torch and the lights out will be passed to the ghost player. And he will begin the next round. Let's place the cards. We have the jewelry. Uh, what is this? A manuscript and an idol. An unknown idol. Mm. Okay, let's think. Let's think. Okay. Hmm. What? I have. I still have three dice. Uh, if I get this jewelry, no, I'm gonna get this manuscript. The main reason I'm gonna get the manuscript is that if I get two of these, this one will be worth four. And uh, I'm going. I'm not gonna be. Mm. Sorry, I'm not the first player. The, the, the ghost will be the first player. So we're going to roll his dice first. Okay, so he's got 3, 4, and 2. So the 4, the highest, will go to this one because this is 2.5. And then the 3, the second highest, is up to us because it's tied. This is 1 and this is 1. So it's maybe it's up to us to decide. We're going to put the 3 here and the 2 here. So that is his bidding. Then let's decide for our dice. Uh, okay. I want this one. I really want that one. So I'm going to put four on that. Push that out. Since he's, he's going to be the, the last player, what he will do is that he's going to roll those dice that I pushed off and then bid again. Uh, the idol, I'm not really interested in that idol. So I'm going to put four here, but I'm going to use two. Double two. So that's going to be equivalent to four. And I'm going to push off his three on this jewelry. Okay. So now I have four on this jewelry and I have four on this, mani on this manuscript. And he's got four on this idol. Now it's his turn again. He's going to roll his dice. Okay. So he's got five and he's got one. So the five he will use first. He's gonna push off. Wait, what is he going to go for? I think yeah, it's our decision. I think because it's a tie, right? Let me get let me check the rules book very quickly for this one. Starting with the highest value dice, which is his five. Check the highest value treasure card and place a die there. Place dice there if the card is unclaimed. The ghost dice have a higher value than your dice. 
but both of them suffice that uh, condition. So otherwise, check the next highest card. Follow the above step. Do this for each boost. Uh, ah, okay. Only when you push off his dice during his second turn, he will only place the highest value dice. Okay, so he's going to play this since it's the same. The next highest value card I will choose to be this one. Because there's nothing in the rule book that says that uh, you must or how to resolve a tie uh, value. But that's okay. Let's move on. So let's resolve this. He won. He doesn't, the, the ghost does not roll for exhaustion. So it's just, he always rolls three die. And we got this. We got our manuscript. Put it here. Let's roll this for exhaustion. Let's go for four, five, six. That's a five. That's lucky for us. Good. We have a good start. So next round, we are the first player and the last player. We have the manuscript, a jewelry, and an unknown pottery. Okay. It's our turn first. I'm going to get this manu uh, manuscript. I want that so bad. So I'm going to put eight in there. I'm going to put eight there. And maybe I am, you know, how about... Let's go all out. About a five here, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe. Yeah, if if he pushes us out, we're gonna have we're still gonna have an uh, another turn. Yeah, we're gonna have another turn. So he will roll his dice. Okay, the highest value is 6, the second is 5, and the third is 3. The 6, which one is the highest value card? This one, 6. I have 8 there, so he cannot uh, get that. He cannot get that card. Yeah, so the next highest, this 2.5, is going to push off my 5 and put 6 there. And then he's going to put 5 on this jewelry, and this one will not be used. Okay, back to our turn. We have 1 die. That we can use to push him off of this card, the jewelry. But is it worth it? Yeah, maybe it is. So I'm gonna push him off. I'm gonna put six in there. Put his dice there. And then let's go to the collection phase. He will discard this card because he got that, claimed that. Then this one has claimed this. I hope I roll a six. Let's go here. It's not in the camera. It's a five. So this card, this die will be exhausted and it goes here. Place exhausted servants here. Goodbye. You're gonna get that later. And then these two I have to get four, five, or six. Okay, they're both five, so they will not be exhausted if they go back to my uh supply. Okay. Let's move on. So I got, I have two jewelry now and two mani uh, man manuscript. I always mistake that for manifesto, but it's manuscript and jewelry. That means this is in effect now. So our manuscript is now worth four points each and our jewelry, the highest value will be scored twice. Okay, that's a good round for us. The next player will now be the ghost. So we will open a pottery, a tapestry, and an unknown jewelry. Okay, I think the jewelries have the highest value uh, items here in this uh, in this in this game. But that tapestry is worth four. That's good. If we get that tapestry. We will get an additional 5 points. That will be total of 9 points. So I'm going to fight for that tapestry card. With my 2 dice. Wait, he's going to go first. Don't be too excited. Let's roll this dice. He's got 2, 2, and 3. So we're going to combine his 2. So whenever you roll for the ghost. Whenever you get a, a, 
a same value dies, you're gonna merge that into one value. So he's got two twos, it's gonna be four. So basically, he's got four and a three. So you'll put the four on the highest value die, uh, highest value card, which is the four value tapestry. And then the three, he will put here, since this is 2.5 value, he's gonna put it there. Okay, now it's our turn. He's four here. I'm going to be he's for here pottery is good to have because it's a set if you if you collected four you will get eight points but I'm gonna fight for these tapestries so I'm going to be eight eight in there or a six a six is good I'm gonna put a six I'm gonna put a six there bump off his two twos now it's his turn again but he will only use the highest roll here and i hope it's not uh you know it's not the same value because if it's the same value we're going to merge it into one value it's a six and a two so he's going to use six to bid on this uh pottery okay so let's resolve the collection phase. He gets the pottery. He gets the jewelry. They will all be discarded. But we got the tapestry worth four points. And then this one will be activated now. And I will get five points. Yeah. So this is worth nine points in total. There it is. And But... We have to roll this. Wow, we have to roll three, four, five, six. That's a good chance. Three, four, five, six. Oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> Unlucky. We got snake eyes. Double one. So both of them are exhausted. <laughs> Nothing we can do. So it's exhausted. All of our dice are here. So for the next turn, the first thing that we can do is only get our uh, exhausted uh, servants so let's start the next round open this idol open this remains and then one manuscript the first thing we can do we can do anything so we're gonna get all of our our servants then he will do his turn he will roll this dice Wow, look at that. Six, six, and five. Six, six, and five. So using six, six, and five, he will. Maybe we can move this a little bit closer here. Yeah, maybe. That's better, right? I guess so. Uh, six, six, and five, he will put six on the highest value, which is both of them. This is four, and this is four. So maybe he's going, wait, this is 12. Because we have to merge the same value. So he's got 12 and a 5. So this one, he will get the idol a 12 and a 5 for that. Ooh, that's hard to beat. And remember, if you if it's your second uh, second turn, which is the lights out, uh, you can only place on one card. Regardless of your, uh, regardless of how many dice you have, you can only put, uh one on one card but to play it safe we're gonna get gonna get this manuscript that is uh instantly four points whatever the value of that even though it's one it's gonna be four because of the manuscript collector anyway let's go to the collection i'm gonna collect this the manuscript is worth two points but now it's worth four points because of that collector then he will get these two items, which is of high value, they're four and a four, that's eight, discarded. Then the next round is gonna be first. Okay, let's begin the, the next round immediately. Open idol, remains, and another remain. Okay, so what we are missing now, we have, we cannot score the tapestry. Sorry, we cannot score the pottery, 
we can score these two and also the tapestry. So we're just, I hope we can get more pottery later. Okay, let's begin. He will roll his dice. Five, five, and a four. So that's going to be ten and a four. So the ten will be placed on the unknown remains. That's 2.5 and then the two. Okay, now we have to beat that. Do we have to though? Uh, maybe I can just put. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Three and three. He's gonna be six. I'm gonna put six here. Push off his four. That's out. And then place one here, just to be safe. Is that safe? No, that's not safe. We're gonna place three. So. Now it's his last turn, or last turn. It's his turn again. He's gonna reroll his die. And it's a one. Since it's a one, he cannot place it anywhere. And that ends his turn. Let's go to the collection phase. So he collects these unknown remains that's discarded. We get this idol. We get these remains. And then we will roll all three of these dice and hoping to get higher than three. Or three or higher result. Let's set this aside. Go here. Hmm? It's not getting caught in the camera, but we got a three, a four, and a one. So the one will be exhausted. Goodbye. Then these two will come back to me and work again another day. What? We have this items now starting the next round we will be the first and the last let's open up one tapestry two tapestry and one pottery okay this is actually good if we get this pottery we will get an extra two coins that's good i, I guess that's that's that makes sense we are first and we only have two dice i'm going to spend most money. I'm gonna spend. He's got three dice. Eh? I'm gonna spend six. Six on this. Yeah. The next round will be the last. Whatever. Let's go. Let's roll. This is the computer's turn. He's got five and a two. The five will be here because that's the highest. The second highest is this, but he cannot afford. So he's gonna put two in that two. And I guess that's the round. Let's go to the collection phase. He will discard these two tapestry. Awful. It's good. And then we will see what this is. Oh, that's good. This is actually good. That's four value card. And it's a pottery. It's shaking. Sorry about that. The camera is shaking a little bit. Um, and then let's roll these two dice. I hope I get three and higher. I get four and the one. So that's exhausted. Ah, oh, my back. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's exhausted. And then this return to us. Let's go to the next round. The, the ghost will be the first player. Open up that remains that manuscript and an idol face down okay he will be first let's see wow six five and three so he's gonna put six here he's gonna put five here and three here that's he made it hard for us huh mm, we have one die if we get that if we get the green the if we get our dice back because it shows here, if you have, let me show it here, close up. If you have dice at the end of your game, that's equivalent to one coin. So what do we want to do? Do we want to bid or just recover our workers? That's what I am thinking now. So give me a moment. Three points or... I'm not sure. I'm just gonna, you know what, I'm just gonna recover my dice. 
may serve us. So this is extra three points at the end of the game. So let's set it aside and then let him resolve this round. So he wins this round. So discard everything here, discard that, discard that, and discard this. All right, I guess that is the end of the game. Let's move on to scoring. How do we do this? Let's set this board aside. Get everything we need. This board, this tree. Give me a moment. Okay, now I need to count this. Uh, these two, we don't need this anymore. These two does not affect end game scoring, so we're going to ignore that. Set it aside. Now, um, this one makes all of our manuscript four points. So the uh, what better way to do that is to just flip this face down so you don't get confused. And put this on top of that. Alright. So that means each one of these is worth four coins now. Then what else? Okay. Now, also, this one says score your highest value jewelry twice. So to to remind yourself, just put this on under the the jewelry, the highest value jewelry, and count that twice. And then this one will go to the tapestry for five points. And then for this, it goes here. Okay, now let's count our score. So this is four plus two, six plus four, because you score this twice. That's 10. And this is 17 plus two, that's 19. Is 20, 22, 22 plus 4, 26 plus 5, that's 31, 35, 39, and 43. 43 plus 3 points, 46. That's our final score, that's 46. Now, let's look at here, only game only game only child game end so this is a bit your own score type of game so you compare the score to the result we got 46 so we got here the affluent 40 coins the affluent you make a small fortune selling your family heirlooms that's actually a good score i didn't expect that to be that good so i hope you enjoy watching me play this game it's fun you know it's, it's a filler game uh a set collection filler game that has this beading element and also you can call this maybe a worker placement huh it's 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 a nice filler game a quick one and it's light you don't have to think very deep in this one so it's also a nice solo game you know playing against uh, the ghost it's really trying to ruin uh it's really trying to ruin your game your strategy by you know trying to discard what you want which is the highest value. So yeah, also the collectors has their their B side. What I used is the A side. I'm gonna show here, just an example. So this is the A side, very simple, straightforward. And the B side, look at that. That's that's really different. So yeah, the first to collect. It's it's a it's a completely different rule. So. If you're advanced, you advanced player, you can mix and match. You can mix uh, the A side and the B side, you just randomize it or play entirely on the B side. But for beginners, they recommend in the rule book that you play with the A side. So that's what I did here, just to make it simple, you know. So that's it. This is the Board Game Hero. Thank you for watching. See you again next time.